Hi everyone, welcome back to From Eggs to Lakes, a series that invites you to reconnect with the amazing wonders of the natural world. In our last episode, we watched as the tree frogs, toads, and salamanders advance through their metamorphosis and begin to form their legs. In this episode, we will focus on the toads and tree frogs as we watch them emerge from the water and make their way onto land. Join me as I create their new homes and be sure to stick around until the end because I'll give you a sneak peek of the salamanders which we will cover in the next episode. Let's get started with the toads and tree frogs. The tadpoles are growing very quickly and they love to eat. I started off feeding them spinach, but when they began to grow their back legs, I switched to feeding them frozen bloodworms instead. It is interesting to watch them grow, especially because they've all grown at different rates. Some have no legs, some have back legs, and some have all four of their legs. As they prepare to come out of the water, they will begin to absorb their tails as you can see with these two little ones. Oh, and an interesting fact I learned about tadpoles is that they grow their front legs under their skin in what is called their gill pockets. When they are fully formed, the legs just pop out through openings in their skin. One morning, I was greeted with the very first tadpole to come out of the water. I was very excited, but I knew it was time to get started with a terrestrial setup as soon as possible. Toads are actually not great swimmers, and they can drown when they turn into froglets if they get stuck in water. I begin with a 10 gallon aquarium and one of my wife's favorite baking dishes. I will use this to create a small pond for the tadpoles, which will include rocks that will serve as an escape route to land. As a side note, I had to make a deal with my wife to use this dish, and it was not an easy negotiation. First, I had to turn on my charm heavily, and I will admit I used advanced psychological techniques to get her to agree. But besides that, I also agreed to buy her a new set of three baking dishes of varying sizes to replace the one dish that I was using. I think we can all agree that I got the better end of that deal. I am using pea gravel as a drainage layer. This will help to prevent the soil from holding too much water. The pond setup is temporary. So I used larger pebbles on the sides and back. It would make it a little easier to remove the pond when the time comes. To separate the gravel from the dirt, I will use an ordinary piece of window screen. The dirt mixture I am using will remain damp, but not soggy, and the gravel drainage layer that's underneath that will allow any excess moisture in the soil to be stored there. Toads love to bury themselves in the moist soil, so it's an ideal setup. As you can see here with Gary, who was a tadpole that I raised last year. He's actually grown very quickly over this last year and he loves to stay hidden in the soil. And he really only comes out to hunt at night. All of the moss, sticks, rocks, and other supplies that I used in this build were gathered in early spring. I like to go out when there's less bugs in the woods and that's just the best time of the year to collect all of these items that I'm using.
Now that the setup is complete, I'll begin to transfer all of the tadpoles that have four legs into their new tank. So when they are ready, they can climb out of the water and onto land. And it wasn't long before they began to do just that. It's very interesting watching them emerge from the water. And I often wonder what are they thinking the first time they discover land. It won't be long until the time comes to release these toads back into the wild. With all of the daily care that's required to keep them healthy and fed, I've actually become quite attached to each and every one of them, but they really do belong in the wild. And for now, I'm just grateful for the short time that I have left to spend with them. The tree frogs were also coming out of the water at the same time as the toad tadpoles, so they needed a new home as well. I followed the same method I did with the toad tank and used a gravel drainage layer topped with a screen to separate it from the soil. I will use a branch that I cut from my wife's favorite shrub to serve as a temporary tree. After I add the soil, I will use extra supplies I gathered from the woods to serve as decoration for the habitat. This terrarium came with a background, which I think adds a bit of depth as well. There was a little gap in between the front access door and the side wall. I'm using fruit flies as a food source for both the toads and tree frogs, so I thought it may be helpful to glue a screen in place to cover the gap. Now that it is complete, it's time to add the tree frogs to the little pond. And in the same manner as the toads, it wasn't very long until they journeyed from their water and up to their tree. It's difficult at times to see them because they are great at blending into the leaves. There's just something about the look on their faces that makes me smile and I really enjoy watching them. Before we end this, and as I promised, I wanted to give you a sneak peek of our next episode in which we will cover the salamanders. They too are growing quickly and venturing onto land. 
and I can now confidently say that these are actually spotted salamanders, which is very exciting. Some people, I guess, refer to them as yellow spotted salamanders as well. Join me for our next episode where I will show you how I build their enclosure and we will watch the fascinating metamorphosis of these tiny creatures as they begin their new lives on land. Thanks for watching.